Hello everyone and welcome to the Charles Norman Show. How is everybody doing? I'm doing sick, but I'm getting a lot better. I tried to do this show yesterday and on Monday, but it wasn't going to work because I was way too sick to do it. I wasn't being able to get through one word without sneezing. Today, we don't have a script again. I liked how last show went, and I'm going to change up that no script thing to make it better than, to make it go better than it did on Friday because I did mess up a little bit when I realized, as you guys who were wa who watched it, so I saw that I was going a little bit over time on the sport, so I had to speed up the rest of the show. And I don't want to do that today, so I'm going to make sure I take, well, spend the right amount of time on everything. So, of course, we're going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about this weekend's football, which was really boring. We're going to talk about the Eagles-Panthers game. I'll give my five standout stars. And since it's Wednesday and tomorrow's Thursday, Thursday night football will re um, I'll give up my pick for tomorrow's game. Then we got some hot topics. And the inspiration today, I will not be teaching. We have a video from T.D. Jakes at the Life class in Megafest like two, last year that we're going to use today. I'm not saying anything after it. I'll make myself look like a fool if I begin to talk after he, what he says. All right, now it's time for the show. Here we go, everybody. Starting with the Eagles, was that a blowout game or what? Was it amazing? Was it a perfect game? No, it wasn't a perfect game. It was an amazing game. Offensively, I felt like we could have done more than what we did, but I'll be grateful. Look at, I think, the score was 45 to 21. Panthers only got 21 points because of Kerry Williams being burned at the end of the game on two touchdowns that really didn't matter, but I wish he would have played it all out. Just so he didn't, just so we could have kept that 45 to 7 score. We could blew them all the way back to um, Carolina. I watched the game with one of my friends who is actually a Panthers fan, so I was like, the Eagles can't embarrass me in front of him. Especially, I didn't think they would lose because I was really sick, so I could barely be myself during the game. I just laid right in my bed and watched the game like this, coughing and sneezing every five seconds. They didn't make me feel better, but they did win. Um, Mark Sanchez had a really good game yesterday. I mean, on Monday, he went 20 for 37 for 332 yards and two touchdowns. He didn't throw an interception, which was really good. Now, with on offense, I would say I am going to say that the Eagles did not do what they should have done. The run pass ratio was 37 passes and 20 runs. It's not balanced at all, and you won't win a game versus a good team. Come on, let's face it. The Panthers aren't really a good team at this point, and we can't go into the Packers game throwing the ball 37 times and only rushing in 20. We won't win a game that way. Um, the defense was lights out from the first two drives. They forced two turnovers on the first three plays of the game. First drive, they made D'Angelo Williams fumble. Second drive, Kerry Williams caught an interception off of which Cam Newton, which I don't think he should have played because he was hurt most of the game. They should have took him out. They risked his whole future. Um, special teams played well. But back to defense, they had nine sacks, three interceptions, and two forced, fumble re forced fumbles and fumble recoveries. That was amazing. Connor Byron played lights out on defense. Had those 3.5 sacks. He was spying on Cam Newton. Kept him contained, didn't let him get to the outside. Um, the defensive backs did pretty well on Monday. It was all in all a good game for the Eagles. I would like to see them run the ball more, though. And special teams, Darren Sproles had that 65-yard um, touchdown punt return, which was amazing. The blocking on that was perfect. But on kickoff coverage, we gave up. A few extra yards, more yards than what we normally would give up. So I do want to, um, I do want them to fix that. And Cody Parker used to kick the ball out of the end zone like he's been doing for most of the season. Don't just kick it right to the edge of the end zone because then they get to the running out, and that's what happens. We need to get more touchbacks. Um, moving on to a different game. Oh, Carson Palmer tore his ACL. Is going to be done for the season. Which is unfortunate because on Friday show I was really high on the Cardinals. But I still think the coaching staff they have, Drew Stan can come in and they won't miss a beat. I still expect them to be really good. And all the primetime football games here, the Thursday night football games, none of them have been competitive. 
Monday night, the last, most of the Monday night games haven't been competitive. Sunday night haven't been competitive. What, what are they doing scheduling these games on the most important, in the most important time slots? The nationally televised games have not been competitive at all, and that's not good for the NFL. The only good game from the whole weekend, I would say, was the Saints 49ers game. The only thing I had to say about that is the 49ers may be back. I mean, you see that. First of all, the Saints defense ought to be ashamed of themselves. On 4th and 10, they gave up a 51-yard bomb. To, um, what's his name? Michael Crabtree. And Kaepernick made a play that only Kaepernick could make. He looting all the pressure, evading all the defensive linemen who could have sacked him. And he made a beautiful throw down the field. Well, it wasn't a beautiful throw because he threw it right away when he went to touchdown. But nevertheless, they got the first now, and they wound up winning the game in overtime. That was the only game that I really was interested in this week. This weekend was really boring. I blowouts or boring matchups. It was. It wasn't like something that you you could have missed this week in the football. They could have scratched it off the list, honestly. Um, my standout stars for this weekend. For offense, I have Jordan Matthews. Defense, former Eagle, now New York Jet, Jay Quanjer, and special teams, Darren Spose. Jordan Matthews had seven receptions for 138 yards and two touchdowns. Jay Quanjer had a sack on Big Ben Roethlisberger, two fumble recoveries, and two picks. And special teams, Darren Spose sparked the Eagles route over the Panthers with a 65-yard touchdown return. Now, for Thursday night's game, I'm going to pick Miami over Buffalo. Moving on to hot topics. I wasn't. Moving on to hot topics. I was going to do the show yesterday, so I'm not going to delete this part out of the show. Happy Veterans Day. I know I'm going to be late to all the men and women who went out and put their lives on the line for this country. I really appreciate you all, and everyone appreciates you all. Please continue to do the great things that you do. Randy Jackson, the only original left on American Idol, is now leaving the show for good. Before, I mean, he's no longer a judge, but he was like a backstage judge on the show. But now he's just done for good now. Nicki Minaj got in trouble the other day because of her video showed that many people thought that her video was like... I don't know how to, what, what I want to say, was advocating Nazism. I think that's how you say it because she had the signs, you know, like the swastikas, stickers, but hers weren't swastikas, stickers, but it was only like the red red um, fabric that the swastikas stickers would be on with the white circle. She said she didn't know that it was Nazism because and she wouldn't do anything Nazism because she has a Jewish boyfriend. I'm not buying it. That's crazy. Okay, the invest like I said, they were investigating on John Rivers. Um, they found out that there were multiple errors in during the surgery of John Rivers. First of all, they failed to keep up proper medication records. Um, they were snapping selfies with her while she was unconscious, and the physicians failed to identify her deteriorating vital signs while she was getting surgery. And she was given too much propofol, so they're probably all going to go down. They're going to shut that place down, which is good. Beyonce has a new album coming out. It has two new songs on it, 10 live performances, and her 2015 calendar. I wouldn't buy it. It's for only two new songs. I think the thing costs $27. And for 10 live performances that you could probably just go look at on YouTube. I know I'm supposed to be a Beyonce fan, but that's just a bunch of crap. Um, Aaliyah, the Aaliyah Lifetime movie is coming out on Sunday, on Lifetime, like I just said. Um, Wendy Williams is the ex executive producer of it. She's been saying this movie's going to be good, but of course she would say Aaliyah's family didn't want the movie to happen, but they didn't need her permission to make, they didn't need their permission to make the movie. They made it anyway. They wanted her movie to go to the big screen. Well, it's on Lifetime. This is start. She can still get a big screen movie for her life. And... Okay, moving on to inspiration. Here's that video of T.D. Jakes I was telling you guys about. 
The other thing that you have to learn is when you hold on to your history, you do it at the expense of your destiny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! That hit me. That just hit me. Did that hit you? That hit me. Wow. Whoa. This is a pump moment right here. <laughs> That's a, that's a church thing. That hit me. Yeah. Did yeah. that hit y'all? Yeah. When you hold on to your history, you do it at the expense of your destiny. Yes. That makes me want to cry. Well, that when, hit me that hard. That's deep. It's Woo. really deep because when, when you consider you, you cannot give energy, wow. but in so many directions, that you are a limited resource. And if you're going to spend all that energy energizing where you've been, wow. then you're not going to have the fuel and the fire and the tenacity and the aggressiveness that you need to energize where you're going. So touch somebody and say, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Wow. Women are taught to think that it is powerful to hold people hostage with what they did wrong, that that's your power, that's how you get back. No, I didn't forget it, and I'm strong, wow, and good. I'm tough. B but it takes more strength to forgive than it does to be vengeful and angry. And the worst part about it is, I really, 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 really believe that wow. forgiveness does not exonerate the perpetrator. It does not justify their behavior. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. Woo! Woo! Because you let it go. Because you let it go so that you are available to be your highest and best self. And because you are saying that I, it is not stronger than me. It is not See? stronger than me. I, I disconnect from it at the sign that I am in control of it and it is not in control of me. All right. I'm still holding when you hold on your history, you do that at the expense of your destiny. That's a quote for the ages, I gotta just tell you. That's it's gonna, powerful. That's right up there with it all has the been, ones. It has been my philosophy. If, if I had held on to all the things that happened to me in my childhood and in my life, I wouldn't be standing here today. The, the, I, I had to realize that when you rehearse those visions and images, you empower them. You, you actually enshrine them. I decided to cast down the idols of my history and to embrace the possibilities of my destiny so that I was available when God's roll call was made. Are you present and available for what I want to do in your life right now? My hands are free. Here I am. Pick me. I'm ready to go. That's so good. Wasn't that deep? Wasn't that good? That's why I won't say anything because if I was to say something after that, I'll make myself look like a fool. So all I'm going to do is give you your weekly assignment, which is to stop, forgive, let it go, and move on. That's our show for today. That was show number 19. Thank you all for watching. Show number 20 is in two days on Friday. That's 20 shows already. We're going to have 30 more left until the last show on February 6th, the day after the Super February something. Second, the day after the Super Bowl. Mm. Continue to be on Watch Your Show. I'll see you guys on Friday. See you later, everybody.